Hi and welcome to episode 103 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Reportage and This Reportage family, and I'm a photographer too. Honoured to chat to the fab Justine Boland today. Based in Canada, Justine has won nine Reportage Awards and two Story Awards from us, and was in our top 50 photographers worldwide for 2020. She was also a judge for us right back in Collection 2, something which she talks about on the episode today, as well as many other things, including approaching each wedding without any preconceived ideas or judgments, why her very first wedding was such a good one, a 21-kilometer run as her first date with her husband, why less gear can be a good thing, how having a heart attack gave her a new perspective on life, and much more. Just a note that this interview was actually recorded in the latter part of 2021, so please excuse us if there are any time-related things in our discussion that may be a little out of date now. Right, over to Justine. Hey Justine, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I, I'm good, thank you. I'm good. How's things um, in the world where you are? You're, you're in Canada, aren't you? I'm in Canada, yeah. It's actually it's morning here and I've uh, just dropped my kids off at school and sitting down to do this podcast now. <laughs> nice, nice. How did, the, uh, how did the school run go? Was it okay? Oh, it's easy. yeah, they're a little bit older, so it's easy to drop them off now. Oh, cool. Okay. How how old? Uh, my youngest is seven and my oldest uh, will be 10 in a month. So I guess I shouldn't say old. They're still quite little in, you know, the grand scheme of things, but they're bigger than little kids. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, similar to mine, actually. Just they're both one year older. So I've got a nine year old and a six year old. So, yeah. Okay, so, similar. yeah, very similar. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, and oh, Canada. I've never been to Canada. I'd love to go to Canada. I was telling my daughter just now that I'm going to be talking to a, a lovely lady in Canada and she was very jealous because she she's always wanted to go there. So, yeah. How, how long have you been in Canada? Are, are you like Canada born and bred or have you moved there from yeah. somewhere else? Yeah, so I grew up in British Columbia, which is where we live, uh, a little bit farther north from where we are. And I actually went to school down in Texas, um, which is oh, much right. warmer than Canada. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Uh, and then I'm back here now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, nice, cool. Is it? Do you get really where you are in in Canada? And does it get proper proper snowy, like proper minus? Uh, so we're in Vancouver, which is probably the mildest, warmest city, and it's very similar to. Uh, like Seattle, Washington type weather for okay. people who are listening from um, the United States, but we get a lot of rain. So oh. this time of year is very rainy. Right now it's very stormy and rainy out. Uh, oh. We might get a few weeks of snow and if we're lucky, it'll get below freezing for a little bit and the kids get very excited about sledding snow days, but not like the rest of Canada. Uh, okay. So it sounds more more like England, really. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably very similar weather to England. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that doesn't sound the best. That's not the best because we do not have the no. best weather. <laughs> No, it snows like an inch and then everything here shuts down. But <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah, that's just like here. That is just, do and the you rest of the family makes fun of us for that. <laughs> <laughs> do you not very frequently have white Christmases then? Very odd. Yeah, I mean, every now and then we might get a week or so, but um, it's yeah. not very common. A lot of people will travel farther north in BC to go skiing or even Whistler is close to us to go skiing. But Vancouver is right at sea level. So, um, okay. yeah, we don't get a lot of snow. Unfortunately, <laughs> we don't either. We're in, we're, well, I live in the very southwest of England and it's really rare here that we get any snow. I don't think I've ever in my life had a white Christmas, actually. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I grew up in northern BC, so I've had lots of white Christmases. So it's but I mean, for our kids, I when it you know, that one or two days of snow, they get very excited and it's like snow jackets on, snow boots on. And it's like half a centimeter of snow outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny i as have only yeah as have only witnessed snow i think once in their lifetime really down here in cornwall you know and they're nine and six so yeah it's not good what is a white christmas like though when you did used to have white christmases what is it like is it is it is it really nice it is nice yeah i mean that was when i lived in more like northern bc um so it would get quite quite a bit of snow and quite cold um but not far from where we are it gets snow like whistler is only an hour from where we are and it, it elevation rises up quite a bit and that's that's white and snowy there of course because they have big ski mountains um you know so just a few hours out from where we are so it's not hard for us to get to somewhere of snow and then you know sometimes snow does stick around for a little bit um for a week or two but yeah typically no but no it is quite pretty when when it's snowing and um as long as you have i guess the the snow plowers and the city infrastructure to help deal with it it's pretty (laughs) yes that is deal with (laughs) That is true, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. true. I guess that's the benefit of living in a kind of temperate thing, not having to deal with that so much. Um, 
But yeah, it's funny how we just, I, I never thought we'd be talking about snow for the first five minutes, but that was fun. Anyway, I like that. It's all good. <laughs> Have you ever been talking about Canada? Have you ever been over to England at all? Uh, I haven't. When I was younger, I was in France and Spain and Italy for a school trip. But England is somewhere that I would love to go. I like actually the history of England. I, I love uh, not uh, photography related at all, but <laughs> I love the whole like English the the kings and queens and castles and and all that sort of stuff i think is really cool oh do you oh yeah cool yeah i guess it's something we don't i don't make the most of we're living here um I, I don't, when i was a kid i used to go around the castles in wales they have these grand uh, castles in wales and that was yeah it was cool you went to a school trip to italy though that's quite a school trip yeah it, i was younger and my grandma was a teacher so she was able to take me along with her so it was a uh, they do these kind of different school trips over to europe um wow with their travel goods they used to i mean i don't think they're doing it now of course but uh yeah that's very cool our longest school trip was just like to london or something we never went abroad although i did a few exchanges where did you ever do that where you like go on like exchanges and a foreign family no okay yeah i love those they were good they were great um anyway so justine how's this season been for you so if i what is the kind of like prime canadian wedding season months uh, here it's pro I would say because it does rain quite a bit in the fall. So, um, there's a few winter weddings here and there, but really those are more like in Whistler where it's going to be snowing because people would just risk having just rained out cold weddings for winter weddings. But typically May starts to be slow and then picks up like June, July, August, uh, even September are all usually pretty busy. Oh, that's very um, similar to the UK scene actually then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think, yeah, probably farther south down you get where it's warmer they would do weddings all year round but we're really limited with weather unless people want to risk having that cold rainy wedding day yeah which is not worth um, it. it's not worth it is it it's no <laughs> <laughs> and how has it been this year have you been able have you been able to shoot a lot more than than last year hopefully yeah so yeah last year was i just think like maybe two or three like kind of small elopements and mm -hmm. um I know other areas in North America and the United States and stuff were a little bit less strict on stuff, but here in BC in particular, I feel like we were pretty strict. And for a long time, it was just like 10 people or, um, or five people for a while. Um, in, that would include your photographer and your officiant. So really just the couple and like a witness type thing. Um, this year, July 1st, um, opened up to have, I think, was like 50 guests or so and i actually had a wedding on july 1st so they really lucked out they were able to have more guests come to their wedding oh, um cool, but it was yeah. like no, you know like the no dancing no all that sort of typical stuff um yeah, right so i think most of my couples kind of held off held off and then august seemed to really kind of okay let's have our august weddings people were waiting so august was very busy in september and and now we're into the fall gang so uh, okay was it from august where there are no restrictions can they have as many guests as they want now and things no, no. So it's still um, outdoor weddings. People were allowed to do more. Uh, they were allowed to have more guests and they were allowed to dance and stuff. It was outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, but indoor weddings were still quite strict. So a lot of my couples that had weddings indoors were trying to switch to outdoor venues just so they could do more. Because once those, those restrictions kind of lifted and they were allowed to be outside. Um, mm -hmm. I think actually today is the date. I was looking at the, our BC um, Health website. They've lifted all restrictions. Um, yeah, just in all when people it. don't really want to get married at this time now. Yeah, well, and it, well, now I think you're allowed to have as many people as you want, but everyone has to be vaccinated, of course. Um, oh, right. Okay. You're allowed to have those bigger weddings uh, indoors and and that sort of stuff, but the the indoor reception, like the vendors are saying, you know, your guests have to be vaccinated. So that's how we're okay. going to do it. Wow, it's so it's so interesting to hear, you know, how obviously it's so different. It's impacted the countries differently and how they're handling it as well. It's so interesting. So, yeah, in the UK, from I think it was from June twenty first, I think. So there've been there's been just no restrictions on weddings, and you don't, you know, there's no vaccination proof needed or anything. It's um, and that's all inside as well. It's yeah, quite yeah. different, really. Yeah. No, no vaccination proof. So that would make me a little bit nervous. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand that as well. Yeah, um, yes, that is a funny I mean, thing. Uh, the kids sports right now like they both, both my kids play hockey and so whenever we go into the hockey stadiums and and that sort of stuff um for the parents they're they're showing it and, and i think they, they weren't originally but then they were having a few little clusters and outbreaks still um so then kind of once they went okay so everyone inside needs to show vaccine passports those kind of went away 
Right. Oh, OK. Oh, so it had an effect. Yeah, that's good. I totally agree with it. I don't understand why it's not a thing. Um, I think in Wales and Scotland it is needed like to get into kind of nightclubs and stuff. Um, but in England yeah. at the moment, it's not. It's, it might be in their plan B if things go even worse. I don't know. Just oh, It's all just mad, isn't it? And how did you cope in general with with 2020? You know, what was it? What was it like for you? Were you, were you OK? Uh, no, we were OK. Yeah. I mean, my husband was able to work from home as well. Um, and I mean, I still have had a little bit of work here and there, but in our, I mean, our kids were home being homeschooled and stuff, but. How did um, you get on with that? Did you like homeschooling? Uh, I, I did not like it. And I, I did, I didn't really have any, like both, both of them are do pretty well in school. So it wasn't super difficult. Um, mm. if anything, I was like, okay, you guys, you guys know all your stuff for your grade curriculum. We could just, just do this stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, their teachers were good. Their teachers were giving them work and that sort of stuff. So um, it wasn't too difficult. And I think we had to kind of set up like a bit of a routine and schedule, especially for the kids. Like, you know, they would just, if they give them the time, they would just play video games all day. Mm-hmm. But oh, yeah. Same so, as mine. As you, right? <laughs> so I was yeah. setting up a bit of schedule, um, getting outside and doing stuff and, and being active and um, yeah. helped for sure. But um, I think for both, both my husband and I are tend to be more introverted personalities so i don't think we were super bothered by not being social it was almost like oh well, okay this is all right <laughs> yeah i get that i totally understand that yeah totally yeah and then when restrictions started to lift a bit and you could go out and see people it was slightly i don't know slightly anxiety inducing in a way yeah was, yeah I it, it, no it was and we have friends who let's have everyone over let's and we'd be like okay just kind of come along it was like i don't really you know one way or the other it's nice to see people obviously and and to be social and be out, but it's not something I necessarily feel I need to do like every day. So um, mm. I know we have, you know, some friends and people who were really kind of like, oh my gosh, like that's just part of their personality is to, to be social and be with people. And so um, I felt for those types of personalities that they just weren't mm, able to do that. That's true, isn't it? That's true. Yeah. And you said you managed to shoot a few elopements and some smaller kind of um, like small weddings. Yeah. So there was a few, um, like hotels in our area that were offering, they would offer the efficient and um, like a dinner for two type things. So some of those smaller type things are um, someone's backyard, just their parents are there. And um, even this summer, I had some couples that were putting off for a few years and they're like, you know what, we can't put off anymore. And they just had like 10, 15 people at their wedding, which was really nice. And you know, I don't, I like the smaller ones. And even now knowing that, you know, some of the smaller ones, would be the 35 40 guests which isn't small when you think of you know a year and a half ago when it was just five 10 guests but i feel like even just those 35 50 guests just lends more intimacy and more um like i get to know the guests even more mm. being being there if that makes sense and um i enjoy shooting those ones a lot more no that's cool yeah no i get that i get that i find it i find it per- it can be a bit di- harder at times though if you've got a wedding with like just 10 guests and you're there for like 10 hours i can fi- do you find that sometimes oh, that can so yeah, be a no, bit I've, tough yeah so for sure that's tough but i there there were very few where they'd have like 10 guests and i'd be there for that long and right. i find if i was for those ones you almost like become just hang out with them for the day like you become part of you know they're at their house and mm. um you're there with them for the day, you know, having lunch or dinner and just kind of hanging out. And, um, but even, yeah, even for the ones with 35, 40 guests that they had a big long day plan, you're like, okay, <laughs> like a, a very long, you know, reception. It's like, okay, I think I've taken like 10 photos of every guest at this wedding. Yeah. <laughs> so generally for those things, I, I will look at their schedule with them and say, we probably could, you know, shorten up a little bit, but, um, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, there's always stuff going on that you could photograph. Yeah, yeah, that's true, isn't it? It's kind of just looking for it and, uh, yeah, shooting some different things. Um, so, just see, I read that you used to love going through National Geographic when you were a kid and that you had a dark yeah. room in your house growing up. So, I guess photography is kind of in your blood. But, yeah, how, how did you come to do this professionally then? What, what's your what's your story, Justine? Uh, it's a very, like, roundabout route. And I think, um, yeah, my dad shot um film photography growing up and was constantly photographing stuff and taking courses and um my uncle actually owns a photo shop and um oh, cool. you know we the national geographics and i remember like i, I think on my website i have that flipping through those and just really loving that and um in school i did well and i did math and sciences and 
Um, I think when you do well in school, you have people constantly telling you, oh, you should do this or, oh, you should do that. Or, um, so, you know, went to university thinking I wanted to um, go into medicine and slowly realized that I did not enjoy that stuff at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it took, it took a little while for me to kind of come around to that. And I worked at, and, you know, I finished university and didn't really know what I wanted to do with my degree afterwards. And um, spent a lot of free time. We have a bookstore here called Chapters and it's a big, huge bookstore and I have a coffee shop in it and I would get a coffee and I would go up into the art section and just kind of like browse through all the photography books. And this is like a constant, constant thing. And, and my husband, when we first met, um, days I didn't work, he'd like, oh, what did you do today? Oh, I just went to Chapters and just spent the day looking at art and photography books. He's like, seriously? <laughs> he would spend the day. I was like, yeah, it's really fun. I really enjoy it. And that so does sound really fun. Like, <laughs> right and, yeah this it is like my relaxing maybe like on my days off it's like that's my relaxing like time to myself that i would enjoy doing so i think eventually he's like why don't and then you take photos i'd be looking on photography websites and look at this stuff oh my goodness look at these photos and he's like why don't like you could do that like how don't you have a camera i've never taken a photo and i, I don't i don't know and so um he had bought me my first camera like a just like a cheap kind of starter digital camera and Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I had quit my job shortly after that and haven't really looked back. <laughs> wow, that is a that's a cool story. Oh, it's cool yeah. how supportive yeah. he was for something that you were really passionate about. Well, I think I didn't really know what I was doing. I was kind of humming and hawing things I wanted to do and wasn't really sure. And I remember even when I quit my job, I was working a pretty decent job and I had friends of ours. Um, and we had just met. So it was like I was the, the, the new girlfriend. Oh, what do you do for work? And I had oh, I just quit my job and bought a camera and I'm going to be a photographer. <laughs> they were like, even his mom, I think, was like, who is this girl that you're dating? Who's like, has, <laughs> have you taken any photos before? No, but I think I could do it. I think it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, though, as well. It's a brave thing yeah. to do. It's a brave thing to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I was maybe brave or stupid, and I quit my job when my wife was like eight months pregnant or so with my first child. And I think my parent-in-laws were like, are you sure? You know, they weren't very happy. But you've got to just do things in life, I think. You've got to do it. Yeah, jump in, yeah. Mm. But when when you quit your job then, did you have, like, any photography gigs in the in the pipeline or anything? You know, how did you get your kind of oh. first wedding? <laughs> <laughs> so I actually, I started, I, I like, thought okay what can I do that I can make money while I'm doing this and still like learn how to do this so all through university I served in a restaurant to pay for school so um I just uh, there's a restaurant down the street from where we lived and I just I worked there I got a serving job there and so just spent the days kind of learning how to take photos and would have friends and be like hey can I take photos and one of my friends would be pregnant or with kids and so I mean that's why I think I started off with family photography because it was just an easier thing to be like hey let me take photos of you um and they were awful. Like I look back on them, I, I had no idea what I was doing. They're embarrassingly awful. But I mean, <laughs> they're not on your portfolio on your website now. Then, but. yeah, no, they're definitely not there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, there's just things that I didn't, I didn't know. Like I, I was like, oh, okay, to be a real photographer, you have to not use autofocus. I don't know why I thought that. So it was like <laughs> manual everything. So I thought, oh I gosh. <laughs> all these photos i look back on them like they're so out of focus and <laughs> i remember thinking they were so good but <laughs> that's funny though is that i get that though i think a lot of people think like that when they're beginning that they you know they've got to shoot on fully manual yeah as you say maybe manually focused as well it's funny isn't it i get I totally understand yeah that. Mm. yeah so it, yeah it wasn't long before i kind of upgrade my camera and upgrade lenses and stuff like that and um started booking some actual real clients but um with the first kind of clients was it family work initially that you started in then with the actual paid clients oh that's cool yeah Mm. yeah so it was family work for quite a while um probably the first like four or five years and i mean my kids i mean i had my oldest right shortly after um i kind of got into it and we i got pregnant and we thought okay well this could be a good thing because i'm going to be at home with him all the time so i can learn from this and i had matt leave um Canada has pretty decent maternity leave. I think like England as well. Um, So I was able to, you know, practice and, and, Oh, that's cool. But at the same time, you know, I was able to do that, but at the same time, you're also have a newborn baby at home. So it's, you know, yeah it's not the easiest <laughs> <laughs> but i read it also I, I, actually on you because you, you talked about your child there you read i read on your tr bio where you say um choosing to photograph in a documentary style can really be credited to my children so yeah can you tell us more about that 
Yeah. So, I mean, I think everyone kind of starts off, you know, you're looking through social media and Instagram and you see all these pretty photos and set up things and, and you think, oh, I want to be able to do that. And, um, you know, you, you do that for a bit and maybe you stay in that. But for me, it was, you know, I was always putting him, propping him up or taking these little photos. And I was like, this is, you know, they're cute and they're nice photos, but at the same time, it doesn't really represent what's happening around us. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, they're starting to take more candid shots and more um, documentary style type photos. And I would probably say it was more lifestyle at that time than true mm-hmm. documentary and kind of, you know, morphed into documentary. But especially the family stuff started doing more lifestyle stuff with families because families were still wanting some like pose stuff. But then, you know, just having fun with them somewhere so they can have some more candid shots. And then mm-hmm. the more candid shots I started getting of our family and families I was taking photos of, the more I was drawn to just the kind of in between type moments and um, wanting to just do like kind of pure documentary sessions and, and, and no more posing. Posing that's makes me cool. really nervous. I don't like posing people. Maybe that's like the introverted part of me, but oh, I, really I get don't. that. Telling yeah, people how to, how to act or how to behave. <laughs> that seems weird and unnatural to me. So totally. Yeah, totally. It is unnatural, isn't it? Yeah. Massive mm-hmm. respect for people who do it and they do it really well, but uh, yeah. It 100%, is. Yeah. yeah. Mm, totally and then so you you carried on that kind of uh, ethos uh into wedding work as well because you you're you're very documentary in your weddings aren't you yeah so the first wedding i shot was actually a uh, family um i had shot a few of their family photos and and her sister was getting married and um she was like you know i want you to to take my sister's photos and i'm like well doesn't she have a photographer it's like a month, month or so after that and they were getting married at, at a very nice venue here um, in Vancouver called the, the Vancouver club, which is like a, a decently private club. So I'm thinking, how does she not have a photographer? <laughs> like it's a, you know, very well off family and she just wasn't really interested in photos. I don't know. My sister doesn't even want a, a wedding photographer. She's like, she just doesn't want to be posed. She doesn't want to be told what to do on her wedding day. She's very much against mm-hmm. that. I think you'd be a great photographer for her. And so I thought, well, I, I, why don't I recommend a few to you that, um, I know who, who kind of shoot in that style also, but are also experienced because I'm not an experienced uh, <laughs> wedding. I had never shot a wedding. I never even been to a wedding where I was even thinking of wedding photos. Right. Mm, yeah. So she, I gave her a few and like, she came back and said, no, I don't, we don't like any of those. We just want your stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> as long as you fully understand that I've never shot a wedding and your photos might be absolute garbage <laughs> you get oh, an actual disclaimer yeah. to sign and should sign yeah an actual in disclaimer. contract like i'm okay if my photos are garbage and <laughs> <laughs> i shot well, that wedding and yeah I, I loved it and it was so much fun and they loved the photos and i i will say that they the photos actually turned out better than i expected them to be um i had one camera i had one lens i didn't have a flash um wow, one camera one lens what was that <laughs> what, what was the lens it was the 50 50 lens um and yeah no i was yeah i was like okay this is actually these actually turned out pretty decent i I really like this this is a lot of fun to do and it was a and it was a perfect couple to probably start off that i guess career path of being a wedding photographer with because they really didn't want anything post um that is perfect even, the first one i was even like you guys let's like go outside for like five minutes and just take a few portraits of you guys because i felt bad that they weren't going to get any portraits and she was like reluctantly okay fine um but they're really into just the candid we don't care that you're here um in the background type and they not not care that i'm there but just like they weren't concerned about a photographer you know telling them what to do and that sort of stuff so they, mm. i was just kind of there in the background so it was such a perfect wedding for that and i remember i didn't take any like photos of their rings um or any of the things you expected to take photos of at a wedding. And I remember driving in my car the next day and all of a sudden I was like, oh, shoot, I didn't take anything, like no detail. I didn't take a picture of like her rings or um, a close-up of the cake. Like all these things you're supposed to, you're supposed to do, right? Oh, yeah. um, so I called her and I said, I'm so sorry, I didn't take any photos of your rings. And I, do you want me? And she was like, no, why would I want photos of my rings? <laughs> like, That's cool. That's a very good point. Why would you want photos of your rings? And so it was such a great, like, almost like light bulb moment where it's like, you could shoot these weddings and track these couples. And maybe not a lot of them were like, you know, like a large percentage, but, but they will understand and get kind of that style. So you could do weddings in a way that's very different. That is so cool. That, 
it, that, it's just so cool that you had that experience as your first wedding as well it's like you just kind of meant to be because yeah to have that from yeah. your first wedding knowing that as you say that you don't have to you don't have to attract couples that just want loads of portraits or want to be told what to do you don't have to be photographing mm-hmm. the wings if the rings not wings wings would be cool if they had a wedding but no rings yes. uh, <laughs> yeah i think that is just so cool what a great first wedding to really get to you know really up your confidence to think that yeah i could do this and do it how i want to do it that's really cool well and i think that yeah like I said, there's a lot of couples and a lot of photographers and you, you get like constantly on social media or in magazines it's all you see is that that kind of posed those pretty pictures and um again the photographers that do that stuff they do it amazingly i could never like, that's why we're drawn i think to each area that we kind of photograph but i mean they're beautiful photos but it's not something that i could do and i think for a lot of couples they don't see themselves in those photos too and so for them it's like what else is out there what other styles can we can we have photograph our wedding yeah definitely definitely cool so so from that first wedding that was it sounded like a great experience how did you did you just realize yeah i really want to go loads more into weddings now and did you just went for it in that way basically yeah i i used that wedding and um that was like my only portfolio <laughs> and <laughs> I, think I, I think the following summer i had booked i gave like a giveaway um for a free wedding to have, have it at, um and was really picky in terms of like what couple I was giving it to. Like you have to be fully on board for this whole documentary. And I was looking mm-hmm. for a really fun couple I can shoot with. And then I had booked two more weddings. And so I think the next summer I only had like three ish. And then, then, you know, the next summer, like six. And then we can't, it just goes from there. Cool. Very good. Cool. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. What year was that, by the way, your fir- that first wedding experience? What year was that? Um, That was the year before my youngest was born, the year he was born. I think I may have been pregnant. So, but 2014, I guess. Ah, oh, cool. Okay, so cool. Very similar, similar time to what I began in 2012. So similar, similar time. Very yeah. cool. Cool. I love hearing yeah. stories about how people got into and it. Well, I think that that was the time also that started kind of gaining some traction in terms of being like shared more online and social media. And um, it must it would have been hard if you were doing it. I think 10 years before, where everything was just still so very posed, and it'd be very That's different. True. But Mm, that is mm-hmm. true. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. Uh, Justine, let's 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 change tack slightly. Then let's change tack. So, um, okay. I, I think I I think I did read. I normally ask people this, but I actually read on your site that you are a bit of a movie fan. That's correct. Yes. Well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool so uh, i don't know if you've ever listened to a podcast before but i've been doing the last few, well i don't know well, the last 20 episodes just doing a little synopsis game so i've just been like reading a few synopses of either films or series and seeing if you can get it oh goodness i don't know if i'm gonna be that good that's okay it doesn't <laughs> matter before my kids were born and now it's like you know not quite as often we get to watch as many movies as we like but yes okay we'll see if i could do it i'm also terrible at names so i forget the movies i'll be like maybe with that <laughs> that was with that person you know <laughs> i love all the excuses in already all the excuses <laughs> no of course just a bit of fun anyway it's all good i think um people could quite enjoy playing at home hopefully so i enjoy it so let, let yeah let's do it um was it on your site as well that i read that you quite like going to the cinema on your own though was that that was on your site wasn't it yes yeah so oh, i mean cool. that was um even before um i met my husband and stuff like i would go it was just kind of like sometimes you would go with friends sometimes not but i always found like it was just such an easy thing to do on your own and um i just enjoyed it yeah no i agree yeah totally yeah. especially when i was when i, I was like, you know, oh, sorry. oh sorry sorry oh. just that you go sorry go ahead that's fine Oh no! So yeah, so I was just gonna say I just did it loads on my own, when, especially when I was at university, because you like I was, you know, you're, you're kind of free at odd times. That well, I was at university, so go to like a matinee in the afternoon, have a cup of tea in the cinema. Sometimes it's really nice. Oh yeah, no, totally. Although we don't have tea here in our cinemas, so that would be really nice. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went to like an old age pensioners kind of matinee, so it was like a special tea and biscuit special type thing. Oh, that sounds very english <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's true is it that's true i'm um, cool anyway let's let's go then let's start with this game are you ready for your first one okay i think so okay so this is this is a movie okay so the synopsis is an undercover cop and a mole in the police attempt to identify departed. each other <laughs> the, yes the departing nice <laughs> boom that was an easy one that was an easy one yes i've watched that movie numerous times 
no that's cool that's cool i actually i actually read on your website you actually list that as one of your one of your films that you really yeah. like I mean, that's like cheating because you knew I would probably know it. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I know, <laughs> I know it's nice to make it more personalized. It's nice to make it more. I've never seen it, actually. Is that, um, oh, who's in it then? Is it Leonardo DiCaprio? Is it? Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio. And the other person here is I forget names. The other person's name I always forget. But um, that's good. Really quite nice. Is it a Scorsese film? Is it? Uh, it is a Scorsese film, yes. Um, Jack Nicholson is in it as well, that I quite oh, like. Cool. Yes, I love Jack. I love um, As Good As It Gets. Have you seen that with Jack Nicholson? I haven't seen that one, no. Oh, it's so on my cool. list of like, movies I have to watch while I'm editing, so maybe I'll have to put it on now. <laughs> oh, honestly, it's brilliant. So, it's, yeah, with Helen Hunt. I think it's one of the not many films where they, they both won Best Actress and Best Actor at the Oscars uh, in the same film. For that. It was, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have brilliant. <laughs> okay one out of one so far justine let's go on to your second one okay so i think you might get this as well <laughs> okay but no pressure okay danny ocean and his 10 accomplices plan to rob three las vegas casinos simultaneously <laughs> uh ocean's 11 yes boom yes another one that you list as... <laughs> oh, i've never seen that actually i've never seen the it. danny ocean might have uh given it a yeah, that was a bit of a clue, wasn't it? That's true. <laughs> Is that so? That's uh, good. I guess it must be good if it's on your list of good films. Yeah, no, it, it's a fun one. It's not really like think much type movie. It's just kind of like a fun movie to watch, and yeah. it's humorous. So yeah, <laughs> I should watch it because I love Vegas. I've been to Ve I've been to Vegas like six times. So I like watching films that are based around <laughs> Vegas. So mm. <laughs> have, have you been to Vegas? Uh, I've been to Vegas once and I was six months pregnant. So I'm not sure I experienced the whole like Vegas typical experience. <laughs> no, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> That's funny. No. Uh, cool. Okay. Right. Two, uh, two out of two. This is good. So this last one is not on your list. So this is a harder uh -oh. one, I have to say. <laughs> and this and this one's a series. Okay. Ready? Okay. 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 Um, it's a really short synopsis, actually. So the baltimore drug scene as seen through the eyes of drug dealers and law enforcement i have no idea no cool i, I think that's a really hard synopsis so that is the wire so i actually people have told me about the wire to watch it and i haven't watched it yet mm, we i know everyone was saying like it's quite about it's quite an old series isn't it it's about i don't know is it about 10 years old now i'm not sure it's quite old movie right it's like a series like a show, tv series yes yeah it is a series yeah um um but yeah as, as like you people were telling me to watch it as well but i couldn't get into it i couldn't get into it uh just uh but anyway people don't really care if i like things or not but anyway it's supposed to be good watch it it's probably probably is really good so that is good though you still got two out of three justine that is good going Thank you. They were pretty easy, but I will I will take that. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I don't think they're easy. They're not easy if you, if you don't have a clue. If you're not seeing them, they're not easy. So it was good. That's was true. Good. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's let's change tack again. So I wanted. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask you that. Is it true that you um, the very first date with your husband was a 21 kilometer run? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a different first date. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So we met on a online dating app. And this is kind of before online dating was like a really big thing. And I remember being really kind of embarrassed about it. And um, don't tell our family that we met online. And so oh, first, yeah. first, first thing he would say is like, oh, did you guys know we met online? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, but yeah, no. So it was a, I had a, a photo of me in the, one of the profile photos running Boston Marathon. Um, and he had been training for it at the time. So I think he had seen that and was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Let's send, we lived close enough to each other and he was doing a training run. And at the time I was um, working in a fitness gym, but I wasn't, I was running, but I wasn't running that distance. So I remember thinking like, oh yeah, no big deal. I can run 21K with you. And um, it, I I ran competitively growing up and I went to university for a track scholarship and, and all that sort all right. of stuff. So I, it, most of the, the boys I had dated at the time were not able to keep up to me. So I was thinking like, oh yeah, whatever. I can run 21K with this guy who thinks he's a runner. And <laughs> and, and he was actually quite fast. <laughs> I like died. I like went home and like was like dead on my couch the rest of the day. My sister was living with me at the time and she was like, Are you okay? I was like, no. <laughs> so I think wow. 
to me. And so we, we chatted the whole time. And when he had messaged me later that day, I was like, do you want to go to a yoga class with me? I was like, no, I can't move. So. <laughs> wow, that's funny. That's mad. What an, God, gosh, I think going on any date is kind of exhausting, even if you're there for like an hour having a drink or something, but a 21 yeah. kilometer run as well. Yeah. Were you able to talk then as you're running? Yeah, I mean, he was training for the marathons. I mean, Boston marathons are decent marathons. He had to be able to decently run, and so, um, yeah, we were, yeah, we we chatted the whole way. So it was, it was nice. So it was like no pressure, kind of just chatting while you're going for a run. And sometimes when you're on those long training runs, it's nice to to run with a friend or someone that you can kind of chat with and makes mm. time go by faster. That's true. But, and um, I guess if the date wasn't going that well, you could just kind of run the opposite direction as well. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Are you still doing like twenty-one kilometer runs? Um, no, not as not no, no. <laughs> not that is lot. I just never. I've never got into running. I've tried to run. I just could. Oh, I just you know, some people running is for them. And for me, it, it just yeah. I just well, I can't do it. The twenty-one k runs, I think, is very specifically your training for like a half marathon or a full marathon. I don't think a lot of people would go out and just like run 21k for fun but oh, okay mm. yeah yeah i did i did one half marathon and that is it for me that feel like i've done that that is enough i do not need to ever run again that is enough yeah so you've done multiple yeah. full marathons haven't you yeah I, in my like 20s and, and stuff i i've done several half and um like five or six full marathons oh my gosh what is it and like i cannot like, imagine like, you don't need to do that ever again i feel like i've done that so <laughs> oh, yeah even if the one is an amazing achievement to do five or six that's amazing yeah what what is it like i know because i just remember my experience of the half marathon like the last three miles i was absolutely dead you know so i, was, oh, I just can't imagine running 26 miles yeah what is it like it's hard it's very hard mm -hmm. <laughs> And definitely the, that last, I think once you get past that, like 20 um, mile marker, it's like, oh, I just want to stop and sit down and not go anymore <laughs> and just walk. So it's, it, it is tough, but um, I, I, I've run Boston. Boston was a lot of fun. Boston is probably the only marathon where I didn't feel like that. And it's you just have these like crowds of people the whole entire way that you're running so oh, that's cool it's such a really cool experience and it's also like you have to qualify for boston so i think even just going oh, in the wow. site around boston marathon and running through the streets in boston like it's it's a really neat atmosphere and cool marathon to do um i've done new york marathon as well and, and new york was really tough um like just across oh. there's crap people cheering and stuff but across the bridges and stuff i just found new york to be a tough one to do but oh, okay. um Oh, yeah, that's cool though. Do New York, New. I've never been to New York. I'd love to go there. It's cool that you've been there, do the marathon, Boston. So mm -hmm. that's cool, cool, very cool. Um, so okay, okay, Justine. So I read, um, I read on your site that you actually had a heart attack a few years ago, which I, I can't imagine how scary that must have been. But that it's, it's given you a kind of new perspective on life and its fragility. So, so yeah, can you tell us more about that? I can't imagine how scary that must have been. Yeah, I mean, and that's one of the big reasons I'm not running 21Ks anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Yeah, sure, sure. It only lent itself to marathon running. Um, so <laughs> it was actually three years ago I had, um, I was having like these weird kind of like pains and stuff like that. I was like, what is going on? I mean, a fairly active and healthy person and we eat healthy. So it's, it's not like in the back of your mind that you're having a heart attack. And by the third day of having these kind of weird things on and off and I kind of, I woke up and I was looking at the clock thinking, okay, my, my husband goes to work at this time. Can I get into a walk-in clinic and figure out what's going on? And then I woke up in the middle of the night and was like, okay, I need to get to the hospital. I don't know what's going on. So I drove myself to the hospital and they were like, oh, are you, do you have anxiety or do you, are you stressed? I was like, no, like nothing, nothing. So they, well, we'll check the, you know, the heart the markers, like the troponin it's called, um, if you've had some heart damage, that's the only thing we can think of, but you're young and healthy, that wouldn't really be something. And, and sure enough, yeah, I had had a heart attack. So that was oh, definitely not what I was, part of me in going into the hospital was thinking, okay, this is, I'm having a heart attack, but that's crazy. Like, why would I be having a heart attack? Um, mm -hmm. And and then subsequently getting diagnosed with something called SCAD, which is um, sporadic coronary artery dissection. It just basically means that inside of your arteries, um, spontaneously dissect so they kind of make a flap down which is bl which blocks the blood in your heart so that's why you have uh, a heart attack right. it's not a blockage of cholesterol or um, that sort of stuff so 
it's it's that and so figuring that out and um seeing a specialist and all that sort of stuff and and why that was happening and um there's numerous reasons for it but one of the reasons is that and then i was had genetic testing done it's called fmd which is fibromuscular dysplasia which presents itself sometimes in your major arteries doing exactly that having tears um right and in that that wasn't really so i actually had a second heart attack um oh, <laughs> which I have that in my website um so a year year and a half ago kind of just as the pandemic was happening um i i was at that point feeling really good and i was running and back to the gym and doing all these things but one of the things that i was told was not to be lifting anything over 30 pounds like ever like again in my life because the fmd is just a, a strain on your muscles and um you know we were doing yard work and and stuff like that and um mm-hmm. going for runs my youngest who was on a bike and pushing him up the hills and stuff and just not really thinking anything of it. Mm. Um, and then it, it happened again. And the second one actually was quite a bit larger than the first. The first was kind of a small tear and it's like, you can you know deal with it and stuff. But the second one um, was a lot, it was like entire section of my heart tore, yeah. huh? oh, which is God. really quite scary. Yeah. So I had gone to the local hospital and my specialist is kind of in our main city hospital. And, and she has said, you know, if you had come to, here like where she works which is what i want you to do next time hopefully not next time knock on wood no yes um, that's what definitely i would have done open heart surgery basically on yeah. you like right there. so i think that was really scary to hear that and just kind of that realization like holy man like that's you know which is i still kind of want to i still think you do need surgery but i'm going to keep you in the hospital to here where she is for two weeks and you basically just bed rest for two weeks um uh, i mean canada has such great health care um you know, people complain about not being able to get certain things like MRIs and stuff really fast. But I, I added up my hospital bills and everything that I had done if I was in the U.S. And good God, I, we would be in debt for life. <laughs> like wow, I just can't yeah. imagine, right? And, it, you know, she had said, OK, you have two young boys at home. What are the, pro- like, you know, prospects of you actually being able to sit and do nothing for two weeks and your young mom no if you're coming into the hospital you're gonna do nothing we're gonna have you on monitors because next time you might not get to the hospital in time um it must be scary to hear that kind of thing yeah, yeah it's really scary and i think like like you know the stuff i have on my website about the you know new perspective on life and the fragility it really does kind of like we don't know when our time is over and you don't um you know we have the things that are important to us and our family and um you know, I'm constantly having to remind myself of that sort of stuff, like what's important, you know, our, our, our house, for example, is often like a bit of a mess or what is that important to clean that up right now or to, to do this or is it spend time with your family or those you love and um, just, you know, even I would say carrying that over into photography and the documentary stuff and capturing moments that really matter, um, what's really important in the long run? Um, is it, you know, how pretty and how posed everything looked or is it like, the, the moments that are happening right now that you're going to forget about type thing. That's so true. Mm, that's so true. Gosh, what an experience I've just seen. Thank, uh, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry that you've had to go through that. But, oh, man, I just can't imagine, honestly. I, it sounds silly, but whatever I could say just sounds just so lame after going through something like that. Well, but thank- it, yeah, I'm not the type of person to, to, like, wallow in my, you know, despair or – or anything like that, but it, it was scary. It was really, especially when we didn't know why. I think now that we know why it's happening and why it happened the second time, um, just knowing my limits and what I can and cannot do. And so um, I am like on a blood pressure, like med- even though I don't have high blood pressure, it's just to keep that kind of like fight or flight kind of your heart rate down. Um, okay. That thing, and it's like, you know, even with my cardiologist, you know, I would have you on a higher dose, but you already have really low blood pressure. Like all these things that help contribute to heart attacks. I don't have, like I don't, you know, so it's just okay. unfortunately genetic kind of fibromuscular dysplasia that I have that causes it and just being able to know my limits. And so it's a good excuse in the evening when I'm like, I'm feeling tired. I'm just going to watch some Netflix tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that is a plus, I guess. That's yeah. true. And yeah, no. 
carry the laundry up and down the stairs and he'll be like, that's not 30 pounds. And I'll be like, it's probably close to 30 pounds. <laughs> you should say it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh gosh. Yeah. And so do, and do you, I, I guess, are you, do you travel quite light to weddings and stuff though as well? You know, you do, we don't need loads of equipment, do we? Yeah, no, I always, and you know, my, like I, my first wedding, I think was a good example of having one camera and one lens. So to be perfectly honest, I'm in, like, embarrassed to show my gear to other photographers because it's like, <laughs> I have two cameras and two lenses and a flash that I sometimes use that I don't really like to use. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Justine, honestly, ditto, totally. I have two cameras, two lenses. I don't swap those lenses. One lens stays yeah. on each body the whole day. Yeah. I have one flash, which I don't use all the time. So it's really similar. Yeah, no, it's exactly. And I'm like, why? Like, I see, I'll see the photographers with like, my second shooter sometimes shows up with more gear than me. Like, holy <laughs> man. <laughs> no, you don't use all that stuff. Just use one camera. I don't like. I don't yeah. want all those. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like being lo-fi because you just I just yeah. know really I don't have to be thinking about oh what lens is best in this situation. You just kind of know and it's all just very quick and intuitive yeah. then I think. And, when, and and there are some photographers who are really good at that technical stuff. Um and they yeah. use the stuff that they have to their advantage. And I feel like it, I just wouldn't use it. I would just it would just sit there and so I mean, the style I photograph and what I'm really drawn to is those moments. And I don't think you need a lot of technical gear to capture that. I think you're almost better off with less gear because you're like, you're more unobtrusive and you're kind of in the background. And um, okay. even the two cameras, sometimes at the end of the day, I'm always like, oh, I take one of these off. <laughs> I just go oh, down cool. to one. Camera. <laughs> Yeah, no, I get that as well. Yeah, I can. I do that for the partying a lot of times. So I put yeah. my eighty-five away because so then I'll just yeah, shoot exactly. at twenty-five. Mm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really similar, really similar approach you've just seen. Yeah. And, and and talking about moments, you obviously you're so good at that. You know, you've won loads of awards from TAR and other places as well. And you were a judge for us right back in collection two, so our second ever collection on this reportage. Yeah, so like uh, that's yeah. early twenty eighteen, I think that was. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks again so much for that. I guess I guess it's, it's so long ago now, but do you, do you remember doing it? Did you enjoy it? And do I, did. I did. I did enjoy it. Yeah, I definitely. I remember when you asked me, I was like, are you sure that you want me to do this? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, syndrome. But no, I, I know I really enjoyed it. I think, I, I, yeah, I know I enjoyed the judging. I enjoy, um, I think as I spent so much time even just like going over photography and different books and that, I think I have a good eye for what makes a good photo despite maybe not being able to get that good photo myself but oh, uh, of course you know I did I did well yeah I mean for the, well, sometimes of course right but uh, <laughs> no I did quite enjoy it yeah oh that's cool no thank you for doing that it's awesome um do you do you have any thoughts or tips for people submitting you know as a past judge yourself you know did you have any kind of criteria in your head uh, about uh, what you were looking for or was it just you know just instinct and what you thought was a great capture you know how did you approach it I would say mostly instinct for sure. Like something, Oh, like you're kind of, you know, so, so things that are a bit different composition, of course. Um, but I'm not thinking about composition, even when I'm photographing, I think that kind of comes instinctual as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes you just see kind of the same things over and over again, and you know where they came from, you know, like kind of some big name photographers are doing these things and people are trying to recreate the images. So even though they're documentary, they're still trying to think like, Oh, I could get that shot while they're getting ready because yeah, that's just doing this and this. So trying to find things that are a little bit different and quirky and, and funny. Um, I think that's really good advice. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Great tips. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, just thanks again for that. Cause that's, that was even just so important back in the really early days, you know? Yeah. So yeah, thank you. It was awesome. Oh, um, <laughs> let, let, <laughs> let's change tack again slightly, uh, Justine. And um, yeah. So has there, has, cause you mentioned about being in that, that bookshop was called, did you say it was called chapters? Was it? Yeah. Indigo, I think it's called now, but yeah, chapters. Oh, okay, that's a cool name for a bookshop, though, wasn't it? Chapters. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, has there been a book that you've read that's had a lasting impact on you in some way at all? I don't know. It could be fiction uh, or nonfiction, or yeah, I like to read, but I would say not particularly. <laughs> uh, <cool. laughs> I know some people have talked about different um, art books or what's that, what, that one book that everyone seems to have read. Um, oh. Like, yeah, Some, I I what it is. Anyways, the artist's way or something, but none of those really speak to me. <laughs> no, cool. Do you have a favorite book though at all, or something that you've read numerous times? Um, a lot of what I read when I was younger was probably like a lot of the English. Uh, this is my my English history, like like English historical like fiction type books, like around uh, 
like oh. King Henry the Eighth and stuff. So that's my like geeky little quirk. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, those are fun. Um, no, nothing in particular. I mean, I'm kind of reading all over the place, different books. I'm always choosing like different types and genres and I can't say I have a favorite. Oh, that's cool. That's a good way to be, isn't it? That's a good way to be. I'm thinking now if I have a favorite book, actually, I'm just glad that I'm not the, I'm not the one answering the questions. It's so, it's easier to ask the questions. Okay. <laughs> I read a lot, and especially now that my kids are a bit older, like, and I, you know, I, I'm reading more. But especially when they were before they were born, I was reading a lot, and um, I remember really trying to rush and trying to finish the Hunger Games series before oh, my cool. oldest was born, thinking I wasn't going to have time to read after he was born, which was which was true. I didn't. But <laughs> were they good? I've never read any of them actually. Are they they are, yeah, they are good. They're another fun little fiction series that are quite fun. But um, I think I, yeah, when I'm reading books, I'm probably choosing from all different. Uh, types and styles and genres so um that's cool yeah Mm-hmm. Good, way, good way to be good way to be i'm like that with music so i'm like really eclectic with my music so like all, all different genres and i think yeah it's good yeah varieties is yeah, supposed to like yeah, same, no, same thing with my music yeah and um cool. do you remember what right was now, the, what was oh right now yeah what are you listen to well, right, right now, now I really like the james patterson books but um oh. i think that's more my son because they write kids books as well and he was like mom do you know they're like adult ones also and i was like yeah i never really thought i would be into them they're kind of like murder gray type books and then i he convinced me to try one out and I was like, actually, these are quite good. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, cool. I have to write that down as a recommendation. That's cool. Yeah. My, my wife is currently reading the uh, Harry Potter books to my children. And so she's getting into that as well. I studied the first Harry Potter book on my English degree. That's how I got into oh, it. Isn't yeah. that funny? I know. Yeah, that's yeah. One, yeah, I've been waiting to read it to them. And um, my oldest has read the first one. So I was like, okay, so we should read the first one over so the youngest can read it as well. But mm. um yeah, those are great books too. They are, aren't they? They're awesome. They're awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I slightly, I've got this one highlighted, and I've not asked this before as well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, Justine, a new question to my kind of random oh, question okay. bank. No, but this is, <laughs> it's a very, it's a pretty easy oh, one. Sure. It's not. No, there's no right or wrong with this. Anyway, I, honestly, I'm building up this question now, and it's not. I mean, it's, so it's gonna be so anticlimactic. But okay. yeah, what is your favorite Disney film? Oh my gosh, uh, The Little Mermaid. Hands oh down. really? Oh, straight away out there. That's cool. Yeah, it is good. It is good, isn't it? It is yeah. good. Yeah. Good I uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I maybe this is the first movie I ever went to the theater and watched. So maybe there's also this like nostalgic. I remember going with my brother and we were there was four of us in our families. My dad took the two of us were the oldest to the movies, and it was like a special treat for the oldest to go to the movies and get popcorn and stuff and watch it. Um, oh, so maybe there's a little bit of that behind it. But I've watched it many times growing up and. Um, I tried to get my own boys to watch it, but they wanted no part of it. I think oh, it really? To- <laughs> There's Merman in it too, but no, they wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. It's a great film. That's yeah. a great film. It is a great, uh, it's a great one. Yeah. Are, are they doing a, are Disney doing a, like a live action of The Little Mermaid? Are they, are they filming one? I thought I read that. I'm not sure. I have no idea. That would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be good. Have you seen Little Mermaid 2? No, I have not. Yeah, uh, it's not so good. Not so I think good. it would be a big disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. My favorite is uh, I love Beauty and the Beast. But okay, so they, see that one actually is one of my least favorites. <laughs> oh really? Gosh, really? Yeah. <laughs> why? Why don't you like it? You know what? I don't. I don't know why. I haven't watched the full movie, so maybe that's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I never really gave it a fair chance. Oh uh, yeah, revisit it. Revisit it now. Honestly. Okay. Right. It's one of the ones where I'm thinking, okay, I can sit down with the kids. They haven't seen this one. It's got the beast in it. So I think they would accept that. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Try it with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Let's, that was fun. I like that little Disney um, little yeah, sojourn there. That was good. Um, okay. Let's go back to photography, Justine. And uh, okay. on the business side a little bit, okay, um, in terms of marketing, you know, just getting yourself out there, what, what's been the most effective for you, you know, in getting, in we- getting wedding clients? Um, so I am terrible at marketing. I will preface this conversation with that. Okay. Um, you know, I think the common answer is probably like, oh, social media and this and that. And I'm awful on social media. Um, I think the biggest thing for me, and especially, you know, over the past, probably the past couple of years, I haven't been doing it as much. But, you know, previously, um, just entering different photo contests. And um, there was always like a BC Wedding Awards. And there was a, um, the, Can- the Canadian photographers have a, uh, an awards cycle that they do and so I was really good at entering into those and I think those kind of got my name on out there a little bit more and um, mm-hmm. people looking for photographers they would go to like 
you know, what are the, who are the best BC vendors? And my name would always pop up. So that got me quite a bit of work. And I'm very thankful for all those kind of award cycles and, and being awarded those. But it, now, to be honest, I don't really do much. I don't know if it's because we're busy in life outside. And I think that also kind of goes back to having the heart attack and that sort of stuff. And it's like, what, what's really important? Like winning these awards or, you know, mm-hmm. being, I do another thing. I don't know. But I'm terrible at entering awards now. I still enter the report each month. I just entered the last one. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's the only one I really kind of look at now. Um, to oh, be honest. I'm not, paying, I'm not paying you to say that either. No, I know. <laughs> I, I value kind of what it stands for. And I love the photos and constantly, you know, looking through the people that have won awards. and like, oh, wow, this is really cool. Discovering new photographers and stuff. So I think uh, it's kind of what speaks to me a bit more than... Um, than the others out there right now. I think a lot of times the awards are just looking for like the prettiest or, you know, your very typical type stuff, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, and that was one so, of the big reasons I started in Reportage, just to, yeah, up the kind of documentary side and the provenance of it. And you've done, you've won so many on there. I have to say as well, I think you're the only photographer that has won two Reportage Wars that have McDonald's in them. Oh, yeah. The second one also with the McDonald's. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's like there's two in your <laughs> awards. There's like a close up one of like bride and groom eating. Yeah. And, oh, funny. and there's another one that looks like it's in a limo with the guy with the like a yeah. McDonald's balloon and, and the bride is eating. I think I love that. That's very cool. So I, I love that photo. That's one of my favorite photos. I just love his smile and like the red um, photo smile. I don't know if the bride was super keen about that photo being. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a great photo of it. yeah i um, love it oh that's so cool yeah. i'll include that on if people listen now do head to this reportage talk. was that in a limo that shot uh they were like in the back of like a party bus yeah so they were uh the big party bus stopped and got the balls and they were passing out the cheeseburgers and stuff like that and he just i don't yeah his little his i don't he, he didn't even real i don't think he would have realized it. he was just kind of smiling and it was just like where the balloon was it was just such a perfect <laughs> yeah it matches it perfectly that's really cool very clever mm-hmm. capture yeah and your other and another photo of yours that won an award was mcdonald's as well. is it a common thing in like canadian weddings is to stop off at mcdonald's it, well i think if they're like especially the bigger weddings they have the party bus i think it's a pretty common thing to kind of pull in and get some food for everyone and if they're taking photos and um that's cool that's yeah. never happened. I, you know, it's my favorite thing after shooting a wedding. So I normally have like four or five hour drive home. and I always stop at like 2 a.m. and have a McDonald's. I love it. Even if I've been fed at the wedding, a post a post wedding McDonald's just tastes the best. But I've never had a, 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 a client, a couple go to McDonald's before. I'd love that. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, the fact that you say you've never had. So, yeah, I think that maybe it is pretty common because I think a lot of times, yeah, if you have the party limos and the party buses, they end up stopping and getting food along the way or something or it's like in the itinerary maybe it's the planners here in vancouver that like <laughs> to stop and get you guys a bunch of cheeseburgers and they're like yeah <laughs> well that's cool we need more planners like that over here yeah. honestly it should be an integral part of every wedding um, a muck wedding yeah. like i'm a yeah a muck wedding call it a muck wedding that's yeah cool. can you actually get did i read somewhere that you can get married in mcdonald's somewhere i don't I know think that somewhere i was like that would be interesting to photograph <laughs> that would that would be the best that would be it i know that was it i would hang my cameras up after shooting them yeah, yeah that would be very I don't cool think i have the same love for mcdonald's that you do but oh really oh. <laughs> yeah when when they stop off at these party buses and get food do, do you eat as well oh are, are you vegan though actually i read we that. Are. yeah yeah so I eat, yeah um before yes for sure a lot of times i just get like some fries or something or mm-hmm. um but but yeah, probably not the cheeseburgers. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, oh, Justine. Oh, I've just um, this has been so much fun talking to you. I've just really enjoyed it. It's been really lovely. Um, I've just looked down. We're almost at an hour, so um, it's gone quickly, hasn't it? Is it gone quickly it for you? Quickly. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's good. 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 Um, cool. So we've just got time for one more question, if that's okay. Yep for sure okay let's do it so let's end on yeah on, on a tip one so what what in your opinion justine makes a good wedding photographer you know what is it that that makes a good one whether that's i don't know to do with people skills or photography skills or yeah just in your opinion what makes a good wedding photographer i'm gonna think about this for a second <laughs> that's okay thinking is good thinking is good i think coming into the wedding with no like preconceived notions or judgment with what the day is going to be like. So I think especially as a documentary photographer, you're not judging the wedding based on the way that the wedding looks or the way that the wedding is styled or the people. It's like you're, and you're really just kind of looking for um, relationships, um, 
and and personalities and that sort of stuff. And I think being perceptive is is a good trait to have and kind of having that intuition and um you know what people are going to going to do or say or how they're going to behave and that sort of stuff and, and and not being too worried if it's like oh that doesn't look really nice or oh that light is really awful and kind of just letting the day kind of unfold how the day unfolds and and letting go of any of that kind of that judgment and and preconceived uh ideas in your head of what it should look like if that makes sense totally i think that is honestly really really cool and no one's actually said that before and that is so important um yeah that's that's really cool mm, totally well, get that you know, like the SFA said earlier that, you know, people are always looking at magazines and social media as so you kind of go into an event, and especially if it's at a venue that's been on, online a lot, or you've seen other photographers kind of photograph there, you kind of think, oh, it's going to look like this, or it's going to be like this, and no day is ever the same, and even the, the weather is never the same, or the light is never the same, and the people are always, of course, never the same. Um, mm -hmm. So just kind of going in with no ideas of what, and I, so sometimes I don't even like to scout unless I'm going, you know, Unless I have a large wedding party, then I might scout out some locations. But even just scouting, I don't like to necessarily do because the chances are it's not going to work out exactly the way you want it to work out. And you're going to notice new things on the day of. Um, that is true. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's no great. <laughs> that is great advice. That kind of no judgment. Yeah, definitely. And especially I remember in my early days, you know, thinking. Well, sometimes thinking some weddings were going to be super great because look, it's at this super funky venue or whatnot. And so you'd build it up in your head. And and then the, sometimes the people weren't as nice, you know, or whatever reason. And then other ones that for whatever reason, wrongly, that we thought weren't going to be as good turn out to be the very best weddings. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, my favorite my favorite weddings I look back on are the ones where they, they weren't super elaborate. They weren't at these crazy venues with decor and that sort of stuff. And because I think they really kind of just focus on the simplicity of the the couple and the, the guests they invited there. So, you know, they're getting ready at home. And a lot of, I think people will say, oh, I don't want to get ready at home. It's all cluttered and it's all, but I really, I love when people get ready at home. So like almost the opposite. It's like, I know the lights may be terrible. I know it might be dark mm -hmm. or this or that, but there's so much in somebody's home that, gives away who they are so having those kind of little clues and mm. um things in the background just just little things i just yeah i mean i shot a wedding here a few weeks ago no a few months ago now i just finished editing it um and i was using kind of reflection in some of the paintings and stuff the bride getting ready and then it was a, her brother that said oh she's actually painted all these paintings they're her paintings that are on the house i'm like how cool is that yeah. they're like in that her photos right and it's like her getting it's like her wedding day but it's also it's her home where she grew up and so um, that's super cool rather than some yeah. like kind of generic painting in a hotel wall or something right? mm -hmm. yeah and it's like in the hotel you get the generic the white walls and it's like which you know lends itself to prettier photos but at the same time it doesn't really tell you much about the couple or about the people that are there and so anything totally. that uh, tell me more and i find the less distraction you have of um like decor or crazy venue or all this the more the more of that you get and i think kind of going in to someone's home or wherever you're photographing without that judgment and looking for things that tell you about the person that you're photographing is is really cool very cool yeah totally i just i've just been nodding away here honestly it's so cool so cool justine and just th thank you so much for talking to me and being so open and you give, give a great bits of advice and sharing such interesting stories as well thank you i've just really enjoyed well, talking to you, you uh, for having me i was like i said a bit nervous but this wasn't bad at all <laughs> oh good good i'm glad you enjoyed it i'm glad you enjoyed it yeah i was nervous as well I'm always nervous but then uh, you know that goes to me after the first like five minutes or something the first few minutes and yeah. it's just yeah. just fun yeah i really enjoyed it yeah. you, you're honestly so great such a good speaker um i know people are going to really enjoy li listening to you so yeah thank you thank you loads thank you thank you mm -hmm. Um, and people listening now, now do head to this reportage.com. I'll include a link through to Justine's website. I'll include, I've got to include those two reportage awards with uh, McDonald's in as well, because we spoke about them. <laughs> <laughs> got yeah. to do that. <laughs> and hopefully, Justine, um, hopefully I get to meet you one day. I'd love to go to Canada. That would be, that would be very cool. And I would love to go to England. So I always see you guys post those like Christmas parties that you guys do. <laughs> like, oh, oh yeah. Like no, oh, I know it's a bit far, isn't it? A bit far to come for a yeah. party. But yeah, yeah, if you are ever in England, do let me know. I live, as I say, in Cornwall in the southwest. It's really nice here, nice beaches and stuff. So yeah, let me know. It'd be cool. Excellent. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. Um, I hope the rest of you, have you got any more weddings to shoot this season? Or have you finished now? Or? 
Uh, I'm finishing up my editing right now, and then I have a few in January. So, yeah, this is kind of the season that the editing season, I'm sure, for photographers around the world. <laughs> that's true, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. Well, I hope the yep. backlog, uh, I hope you, you can get it down and uh, the editing goes smoothly. And um, yeah, all the best for the rest of you. I hope you have a nice Christmas. And uh, yeah, Thanks. maybe meet you sometime. In... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> You've been listening to the 103rd episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. Justine was so fab to talk to. Hope you enjoyed listening. Do head to thisreportage.com for a link through to our website. We now have 103 episodes of the podcast available where we speak to wedding and family photographers from all over the world. Delve into our back catalogue to hear from the likes of Dan Morris, Eve Sieppers, Sitlali Rico, Kevin Kafash, Anna Puma, Gretchen Yost, Pedro Villela, Marisa Martins, Emma Collins, Nicole Asteris, Else Corsten, Adam Riley, and many, many more. If you're not a member of this reportage or this reportage family, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 individual award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers, and much more too. We've just revealed the winners of our first awards collections of 2022. Congrats to all the winners. Head to thisreportage.com and thisreportagefamily.com to see our wedding and family award winners respectively. This also means that submissions are now open for our next collections. We have six award collections per year, so every two months. The deadline to submit is the same for both our wedding site and our family site. Submit by 2359 GMT on the 24th of March 2022. No poses, nothing staged, this is reportage. And this is bye for now.